you never know who you're going to speak to that day. We'll start with that because it's a theme that I've seen from a few speakers, something that Kelly mentioned that you never know who you're going to bump into. And there was a guy at table four and he was, he was very nice in our, our new restaurant and we, we did some fun stuff and then found out he was one of our jack starters, which I'll explain about shortly. It found out that he liked a bit of Twitter too. And the next thing you know, Theo, who I'm obviously talking about hopefully, uh, said, do you want to come and give a TEDx talk? So my talk's going to be subtitled, if your business closed, would people be sad? Because mine closed and people were sad. And then they went from sad to pretty angry. And they went from angry to pestering me to reopen. And talking about, Darren was talking about failure. There was nearly a very public failure if the Kickstarter that I launched didn't succeed to bring the business back. So if your business closed, will people be sad? I'll come on to the Kickstarter shortly. But why, why burritos? If we're talking about going from here to there, why burritos? I, I'm not a chef. I mean, I am now. But I was a runner. <laughs> I mean, yes, kind of four stones thinner than just now, but I used to run a lot. Um, and I was training in Colorado. And you could get a burrito at the end of your 20-mile run. And you could run home, and this thing this was beautiful. It was great. And... Then I kept running and ended up at the university, at Glasgow University. I was a storyteller or marketing lecturer, and that was good fun. Uh, it was fine. I mean, people say they're stressed in their, in their life. You're not. You're at a university, people. You're not stressed. I didn't go in for three years, and they didn't notice I was gone. I was running a restaurant. They paid me more every year. Then they paid me nine months' salary to leave. It was beautiful. But anyway, at the university, I was promised promotion. I'd done a good thing. I'd won a thing called the Queen's Award for Enterprise for the university. It's based on my sort of doctoral research that you could have the Queen's Award for a degree program. And senior lecturer, here we come, promised it, and then it, it, it didn't happen. And the Queen's Award's a big deal. You go to Buckingham Palace, you get the handshake. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, it is really a really special award, the top business award in Britain. And I, I didn't get a promotion. And I got, had my annual appraisal. And I said, look, I'm really demotivated right now. And the chap who was the acting head of department, Professor Robert McIntosh, you're now in a TEDx talk. Uh, he looked at me and he said, I said, I'm really demotivated. He said, why should I care about that? And I'm not the guy then that I am now. And I put my head to one side and I said, because you're the manager here? And I walked out of that room and I said, I didn't go back for three years. I went in, did absolute minimum and took off. And that burrito idea, that thing that had been bugging me for years, not, not 100 yards from here, Subway. We used to sit up there in 2005. We'd done 20 miles on a Sunday morning, eating a Subway going, this is crap. Why can't we have a burrito? Well, you can now. You don't have to run 20 miles. I obviously don't. But you, <laughs> stop laughing. Uh, you, you can do that. And the restaurant, I didn't know how to run a restaurant. Uh, here to there, I didn't even know where there was. But we figured it out. We worked damn hard. And we talked to people on Twitter, especially. Legal Jacks is built on talking to people like Martin, that I've known since 2010 on Twitter. And we created a reputation for being responsive. We won the Observer Cheap Award for Scotland, UK runner-up. We got a huge UK uh, social buzz marketing award because our customers made music videos about us. Now, that's odd. And they're pretty good videos. And he, Ian Rankin was in one of them wearing a Santa hat. I mean, I might have been drunk that day, but there was some odd stuff happened. And everything was going okay. And in 2014, there was a leak started, and it went on for 17 days. And every day, you knew what was happening. The ceiling was going to come down. We knew it was a shower upstairs, because you can tell if the water goes on and off, and you phone the students, there's someone in the shower, yeah. It's a new twin shower uh, with a leak in the waste pipe. Nobody would do anything. The people that I reserve my uh, most anger for as a council because they're meant to intervene in such a situation. Did they? Nah. The caseworker who was assigned didn't contact me once. And after 17 days, the ceiling came down and I went to a senior accountant. I said, here's the books. Here's where I'm at. What do we do? All the stock that we had, that we had the biggest amount of stock in the restaurant ever because Billy Connolly was due to start playing some gigs at the Usher Hall. And we were, we had loads of bookings. We knew it was going to be a great time. Uh, and we were screwed. So the accountant suggested a voluntary liquidation. That's fun. Talk about failing, Darren. Yes, sir. I'd, 
yeah, down we went, and the staff thought they were coming to a meeting for come back to work. Uh, so yeah, here's the senior accountant, and he, we're down the road, because at least liquidation protects the staff's um, pay and holiday pay, and every last penny they will get if you do it that way. So it was an expensive way of saving our reputation. And it wasn't a lot of fun. Um, sitting in the pub one day with my pal Dr. Phil. People keep talking about a Kickstarter. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, I'd had a few drinks. I was like, well, I'll send, a di I'll send Ian, Ian Rankin a message. We'll see if he'll help. Didn't hear anything. Really, OK. Uh, a bit drunk, shouldn't have done it. The following morning, 5 to 5. On the way to the airport, happy to help. Ian. Brilliant. OK. So Dr. Phil wrote the script. And hopefully, if you've got three minutes of boredom later on, you can Watch, watch the video for the Kickstarter. And it was really cool, because Ian read my uh, 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 eulogy in the graveyard down at St Cuthbert's, just near the old Illegal Jacks. And he was funny. Uh, he was really, really great. And I was kind of laughing and crying as it was being filmed. It was quite special. So we need to get the restaurant back. And 1,030 people put in £80,000 to help bring the restaurant back. And setting up a restaurant from scratch costs more than that, but hey, it was, it was phenomenal. Um, and why a Kickstarter? Well, here's the other thing. You're all hearing about how oh, the banks are going to lend and stuff. <laughs> no, they're not. Hi, Santander, it's me. Been with you for five years. Uh, going to reopen. Can you help? No, no, uh, it's, 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 a new, it's a new business. No, it's not. It's an existing business. It's technically a new company, but it's, not, it's an existing business with customer base, suppliers, chain, all the rest. No, we don't do that kind of thing. OK, cheers. Spoke to one or two other banks, not really interested. The government's lending circle thingy, nah, be years filling out the paperwork. Kickstarter, everybody kept saying do a Kickstarter. And so you put it out there. We've got this great video to launch it. I was on the, what was that, Fountain Bridge show? Oh my word, that's professional. But pretty good fun. Uh, and it didn't work, the Kickstarter. People got excited, but it wasn't working. And I was told by one of my, one of my friends, he's like, you're going to fail. I was like, yeah, I can see that. So you start going through, who do you know? And at the back of my book here, you can't really see it, but there are lists and lists of people I know from Twitter, pages and pages and pages. So I'm just send them everybody a direct message, personal touch, hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of them. Sitting at the computer, you know, hi, it's me, we're trying to get back. Ah, oh, I've been meaning to do that. Yeah, okay, do it. And slowly, you could see it start to turn around. And three days before, you knew that was a the day. There was a load of traffic online. You thought, yeah, today's the day. It's going to work. <laughs> and it worked. And then it went through the target. And it was awesome. Uh, it was absolutely superb. Um, would I use Kickstarter again? Hell no. It's crap. It's really bad. Because you're trying to pay money to an American website. And the banks go, ooh, that looks a bit like fraud. So the whole payment thing is a pain in the neck. Do Kickstarter help you? No. Is there any customer service? No. Any promotion? No. They're rubbish. What you need to do is you need to somebody, anyone in the room who knows Richard Branson, have a word, say, Richard, launch Virgin Starter. It won't touch the sites. Just do the same thing. You've got the brand already. Uh, you've got the Virgin money. It's, that, that's, how, that's how you should do it successfully. And then use Virgin's network to promote it. But hey, I'm obviously not going to make any money from that idea. Uh, so what... So we got up and running, and now there's uh, 17 of us have a job, which is, which is outstanding, thanks to social media and to the, everybody out there who tripped in. It's been pretty brutal the last few months, I'm not going to pretend. I mean, January, February, people are, aren't going out to eat, the weather's been a bit crap. And you're trying to break into a new lunch market, because lunch is a five minute walk, and we're now over at St. Patrick's Square. But it's starting to happen. You can see it. There was enough good things in the autumn, and it's going to work. And lately, I got onto the entrepreneurial spark program that Royal Banker Bank rolling. So, speaking to someone there, can we open a second restaurant, create another 17 jobs? Um, I guess that's the that's the future, and that's my there over there. I'd like to create a bigger company. The making payroll every eighth of the month is pretty special. It's five figures you have to find from people coming in the door. So you have to look after your consumer, uh, look after your customer, get to know them. And as I said at the beginning, if your business closed, would people be sad? 
Well, they were sad because we'd taken the time to get to know them and now they're happy that we're back. So to the future, thank you for listening. <laughs>